two years ago when Alabama played and won the SEC tournament title. This building was more than half empty. Crowd on its feet. Tigers set to trigger it in. Smart gets it into Watford. Threw it away. He'll run it down to the backcourt. He will take it to the top of the arc. Watford three at the buzzer blocked by her. The putback, no. The buzzer sounds. And Bama hangs on. Oh, my goodness. But our hearts were absolutely full. We don't have to be a football school or a basketball school. We just win championships. So we're champ- championship school. Today, the Alabama Crimson Tide plays for the SEC Tournament Championship, taking on the Aggies of Texas A&M. Championship Sunday. There is absolutely nothing like it. The only thing better is when you got a ton more fans than the other side. Wow, Bridgestone Arena loaded, not with maroon. A little orange, a little blue sprinkled in. Didn't want their tickets to go to waste, but they're watching the tide roll in to play in the SEC Championship. SEC freshman team, number 15, Noah Clowney. At center, a seven-foot sophomore from Brampton, Ontario, number 14, Charles Bediaco. At guard, a 6'1 junior from Muscle Shoals. Second team All-SEC, number one, Mark Sears. At guard, a 6'1 senior from Hackensack, New Jersey. Number five, Javon Winterly. And at forward, a 6'9 freshman from Antioch, Tennessee. First team All-SEC. All-SEC freshman team. SEC freshman of the year, number 24, Brandon Miller. Their chant, Bama. As Rocky, Rocky is playing on the PA. Whoo, man. The blood ain't pumping in this one. May as well grab a toe tag. It is unbelievable in this place right now. And Bama's Charles Bediaco. The ball is going to go in the air. And we're going to get underway. And the tap is going to be controlled in the backcourt to our right by Alabama. Quinterly will bring it front court to our left as we're underway in the SEC championship. Quinterly on the wing, the Miller right side. Brandon trying to work away from the defender in Dexter Dennis. He goes to his right, gives it to Bediaco. Steps through, kicks it out to Sears. Open three, bottom, and what a way to start. A bank first three for Mark Sears. Pick it up where he left off, dropping his final three of the day yesterday. Aggies trying to answer the other direction. Dennis with it inside the arc. Driving right, stopping, dumping it all. Well, jumper's good. 15-footer makes it 3-2. Bama, the one-point lead. here. Sears the other way. You love to see Alabama get off to a good start from three, but especially number one, Mark Sears. Sears lets it fly again. Misses this time. Ball tipped out, controlled by the Aggies, and somebody lost his shoe. I believe it was Clowney playing with just a right shoe on. The run up, missed, and they're going to call a foul on the tide. I believe it was Clowney who slipped while trying to keep his footing. Had a blowout, lost his shoe, and how about this? Not a manager, not an official, but Buzz Williams retrieving the shoe for Noah Clowney. The assist from the A&M coach. That's a tough break. He slipped, Brian, because he was on his sock foot. It was about to fall. Grabbed the A&M player and is called for the foul. So his first team first. Important how this game is called. They have really let them play in the SEC tournament. Could be advantage to Texas A&M, a very physical basketball team, especially defensively. Radford gets the inbounds pass, drives in, blocked by Bediaco, run down by Miller and Bamba with the ball in the 3-2 lead. Brandon front court, driving right side, crosses over, gives it to JQ. JQ down the lane. Bediaco 
Joe missed it, got it back, laid it up and in. No assist for Javon Quinterly, but a great play, a smart play by the veteran guard. Lobbed it up to Charles, wasn't able to get the alley-oop to go down, but the offensive rebound put back. Two Bama, floater the other way, missed. Coleman gets the rebound, shoots it up and in for two. Bama had it in their hands, couldn't hang on to it, and the Aggies get the second chance. Miller with the basketball, ahead to Quinterly, right side. Five to four, our score. Bama the ball in a one-point lead. In the paint, Bediaco kicking it out to Miller. Brandon directing traffic, calling for a screen, gets it, goes left, picks it up, needs help, gives it off in the corner to Sears. Trying to drive, got cut off there by Marble. He'll cross him up, he'll kick it over JQ, fakes the three, steps right, three, all in and out, and it oh. back in. Oh, mercy, it hit a lot of metal, but it fell through the net, and Bama hits a second, bank first three. On the other end, the Aggies answer. Dennis knocks it home, and it's 8-7 Alabama, the one-point edge early in this one. Obviously, Alabama doesn't want to get up threes, give up threes, but good news to see Mark Sears and Javon Quinterly knock down early deep shots. Sears on the drive, double team, needs help trying to step through, does so, gets rid of it outside into the hands of Quinterly. In the corner, Miller, all alone, three, rimmed out, no good, rebound tipped up twice, and in the corner, it will be saved into the hands of Miller. No look pass, Betty, I go the flush. Great hustle by both teams, but the ball goes to Alabama. Brandon Miller gets it inside. The defense reacts, gets it to Charles for the easy dunk. JQ just looked at me said, let's go, baby. Let's go, and the Tide tried to do just that. Coleman to the top of the arc. Dennis, Dennis backing it out, looking to his left, defended by Miller. Dennis between the legs with the dribble, goes right, fall away, 15 short, rebounded by B. Mill, and here comes Bama the other way. Miller right side, Clowney, driving, stopping, Quinterly all alone, three, got him. Oh, JQ, knocking it home, 13-7 Bama with 16.30 to go in the opening half, a third First three early for the Crimson Tide. Alabama getting out and running off of their defense. Some open looks and knocking them down. Taylor three. No. Rebound, though, by Coleman of AM. A reset to the Aggies at 20. Crowd on its feet. Coleman looking, firing near side. Radford floating the lane. No good. Rebound tipped out. Foul on AM. Foul on the Aggies. That will be on Marble, his first. Team first, and the Tide will have the ball up 13 to 7 here in Nashville. Alabama getting out and running, and great to see the three balls falling early for the Crimson Tide. Alabama three for five from deep, and maybe more importantly, who's making those shots? Javon Quinterly with a couple threes did not shoot the ball well, didn't play well yesterday in the semifinal against Missouri, and Mark Sears, who's been struggling the last week or two of the season, knocking down an early three as well. 16:05 and ticking. Time left, first half. Bama front court with Sears to Quinterly now between the circles. AM the man to man. Quinterly working against Radford. Goes right, goes to the baseline, throws it out to Sears. Kept his balance, kept the dribble alive. Keeping the possession going with 10 on the shot clock. Sears in the corner to Clowney. Driving the lane, kicks it over to Miller. All alone three. Make them pay, baby. Miller knocks it home. Another one for the tie which leads 16 to 7. Alabama getting wide open looks. Brandon Miller all alone knocks it down. Garcia goes left side to Dennis. Bama with four. Bank first three early. Inside Dennis shot up, partially blocked. And oh, they're going to call a foul on Clowney. And if so, that'll be his second. Oh. Wow, a big call right there. If it's on Noah Clowney, we'll tell you when we come back. But 15-23 is the time left. First half, a great start here in Nashville. 16 to 7 our score. Good guy. Calm demeanor fool you. Noah Clowney is a leader on this team despite the fact he is just a freshman. Well, these freshmen are young but mature. They're tough and they handle themselves in such a professional way, a lot like NBA players. And many of them will have NBA futures. Yeah. So that works out for these guys. It works out for us Dennis, as we watch them in college. Dennis misses the second after making the first, but the ball goes out of bounds, touch last by the Aggies. So Bama ball with 15-21 to go first half, a 16-8 Alabama lead. Sears, Quinterly, Miller, Bediaco, and Gurley are the five on the floor 
for Nate Oates, SEC champion Alabama Crimson Tide, trying to add the tournament title here in 2023 as well. Quinterly, center of the floor, sizing things up, works to his left, gives it into the paint, Betty Ako, gives it off to Gurley in the corner to Miller. Miller at seven, at six, but flies short on the attempt, ball knocked around and picked up by AM. They went with a bit of a zone look there, and it paid off, and Bama missing a shot. Aggies a three on the other end, missing. Miller snags it and now starts the break. He will drive in, he'll go in, finger roll, it is called an offensive foul. Steven Anderson with a really rough call. All right there. Nate Oates didn't agree with it. Neither did many in the building. Brandon thought he, oh, he avoided the defender. It. Oh, my goodness. That's terrible. That's so bad. He flopped, and Steven bought it. Another tough call from that whistle. 16-8, Alabama with the lead. A&M with the basketball. Radford with it, giving it off near side and out of bounds. Touch last by Taylor. A little justice right there as Taylor loses the handle. Out of bounds. Bama will get it right back. Ball don't lie. 14-28, the time left. Unfortunately, it doesn't wipe off the foul on Miller. Would have been a three-point play opportunity as he made the layup as the defender slid underneath, but Alabama with a chance to extend their lead right now on the offensive end. Quinterly drive, the finger roll, the miss, and the rebound secured by AM and Washington. They'll hurry it ahead to Taylor near side, trying to shake free from Gurley, throws it into the low post, pump fake Garcia, shot blocked underneath, and then a whistle, and they say that the ball hit the baseline and possession will stay with the Aggies. Quinterly gets a breather, replaced by Jaden Bradley, the freshman from Rochester, New York, who's been terrific this year as well. Great start for JQ. Played at such a high level the last couple of weeks. Didn't play quite as well yesterday against Missouri, but playing with a lot of confidence here in the championship game where he had a ton of success a couple years ago. SEC tournament MVP in that win. Inbounds pass coming for the baseline. It goes back to the inbounder, Taylor. Far wing blocked by Gurley. Into the hands of Miller. Brandon on the drive. Going in, stepping through, shooting, missing, but he got fouled, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. What a defensive play by Noah Gurley to block the three, control the ball, and start the break for Alabama. And matched up against one of the best guards in college basketball. Wade Taylor thought he was open. Great defensive play by the veteran. Noah Gurley blocks the shot, starts the Alabama fast break, and Brandon Miller in transition. This time gets the call as he goes to the line for two. First one up, first one good for Brandon, who has been so good at the strike this year and, frankly, everywhere else he's been on the floor. It's 86% range in SEC play. Hits them both right there in the SEC Player of the Year. Gives Bama a 10-point lead at 18-8. Front court, AM with it. Radford on the far wing, playing off the screen. Garcia trying to post up on Sears. Went baseline, got cut off. Left alone now, will hand it off to Radford. Cut off trying to go baseline. Great defense by the Tide so far. Shot clock at eight. Radford with it at seven, out high at six, at five. Radford at four, at three. Layup good. Somehow got it to go around Gurley and over Betty Ako. A fantastic play from Radford to cut the Bama lead to eight. What an offensive play by Radford. That was great defense, almost blocked by two Bama defenders. Here's Sears, top of the arc. Throws it left corner to Gurley. Flips it to Miller. Catches shoot three, short. Rebound tip by Betty Ako. He got fouled, and that was will be personal, or team foul, I should say, number three on the Aggies. Brandon Miller a little short with some jumpers. Well defended, but definitely shots he can make. One of the top ten three-point percentage shooters in college basketball the majority of the season. Knocked down an open shot, but has had several, or not several, a couple, a little short. Five points, four boards already, though, for Brandon as the inbounds goes to Betty Ako. He will pivot and hand it off to Bradley. 
Jaden with 15 on the shot clock and 13 minutes to go in the half. Will direct traffic. He'll drive left. He'll pick it up. He slipped but kept his pivot foot down. Gives it off to Sears at five. At four, Sears at three. At two, we'll give it off Gurley. Let's fly at the buzzer. It's short. Rebounded to Bediaco. Out to Gurley. Gurley back to Sears as Bama gets a reset to 20. Over to Miller. Fakes a three. Drives in. Leaner block. But a oh. foul is called, and that's going to be another offensive foul on Brandon Miller. So Clowney and Miller now both with two each for the Crimson Tide. We get a look at the replay again, and this time, yep, Brandon, I wonder about the feet of the defender. Coleman, did they get outside the restricted area? Nate Oates talking to Brandon Miller as if to say, you got to understand the situation better. So now two of the top players in the nation on the bench with two fouls for Alabama less than eight minutes into this game. On top, 18 to 10, the youngins have to step up. Radford on the drive, gets downhill, puts it up, lost out of bounds, touch last by the tie. Bama wanted an offensive foul, I believe, as the lefty Radford seemed to be running with a stiff arm in front. A&M to inbound. They do to Radford. Catch and shoot. Stepping up now. Jumper no good from 17. Into the hands of Dennis. Missed the layup. Rebound Washington. Up block. Back into his hands. That's a tie up. And the arrow is going to favor Texas A&M. Great defense by Alabama. Texas A&M, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. And they've gotten a bunch here in the first half. Alabama needs to defend and close out those defensive possessions by getting on the defensive glass. Two of their best rebounders now on the bench with two fouls apiece. A&M to trigger it in. It'll be Gordon to do so. Gets it into the corner to Dennis. Being defended by Rylan Griffin, who checked in a few moments ago for Alabama after Miller picked up his second. Griffin, another great freshman. He is from Dallas. Dennis with the basketball, working left. Bradley defending, had it stripped away, knocked away, scrambling on the deck. There's a battle, shot clock violation. Great defense by Alabama, forcing the Aggie turnover. 11.55 to go in this wild and woolly first half. Bama on top, 18 to 10 over A&M on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. With his athleticism, the way he defends, rebounds the ball, and he's been pretty good offensively in high pick and roll situations. It'll be Rylan Griffin who will inbound it for the tie. A little pressure in the backcourt by the Aggies. His zone look as Bama beats it, getting it to Gurley over to Griffin, right side. Oh. In and out and halfway oh. down. It stuck its tongue out and popped out. And here comes AM the other way. Front court, Radford gives it off to Coleman. Driving the lane, wild shot. That's going to be an offensive foul. How about Nick Pringle making his presence felt early, taking a charge? Boy, these officials love the offensive foul call. It's more dramatic. They, they enjoy doing it. I'm not sure that was. No, it wasn't. It was, it was a terrible, terrible call. Oh, and these so officials, <laughs> I, get, I mean, it doesn't even out because Brandon Miller's on the, the bench with two fouls. But too high for Pringle as Bradley ran the other way and Nick goes look man I'm the best leaper on the team but I don't start at 7-1 like Betty Ako does that one even went over his head and I think it was more the timing of it yeah. than the height of it Nick Pringle could get anything that's still within in the building. about 15 16 feet over the basket but that one the timing a little bit off both of those players have been so good on lob plays this year but unfortunately a turnover 18 to 10, our score, bam of the lead, but AM with the ball. They work it into the low block to Coleman. Working on Pringle, spinning, shooting, knocked out of bounds. Did Pringle get another one? I got shielded. I know it went out of bounds, but was yeah, it a block shot? It was. Great position defense again by Nick Pringle against one of the strongest interior players in the SEC, Henry Coleman the third, able to spin back to his left hand, but Pringle knocks it out of bounds. He's inbound it to Gordon. Short corner jumper, no good. Weak side rebound, though, inside by Dennis, who gets the reverse layup to go in for two. The Bama lead down to six. Quinterly, who's back in, gives it off to Bradley. Jaden will direct traffic, working from center court. Against the Aggie man-to-man, -man. he'll dribble to his right. Now he'll dribble back to his left. He'll direct traffic. He'll go down the lane. He'll circle away from trouble. He'll find 
Griffin, right side three, and this one stayed down. The fifth bank first three of the half for Alabama, and the tide leads 21 to 12 with 10.38 to go before the break. Almost had a three a couple possessions ago and went halfway down, popped out this time. Able to knock it down. Big shot for the freshman, Rylan Griffin, who's been struggling from deep. Aggies working into the low post marble, throwing an elbow at, man, they call it on the tide, though. They're going to say that Pringle, who was taking an elbow from marble, delivered a little bit of a forearm. Well, listen, it's they're both fouling each other. They and are. That was That's usually going to go against the defense. So physical down on the low block, and they've been letting them play here in the SEC tournament in Nashville. Bama called for fouls, but matching the Aggies in terms of physicality, which as long as we got the numbers, you love to see. Marble trying to drive against Pringle, spinning to his right, knocked away, and they call him for a foul. <laughs> Pringle went straight up then, and Oglesby with the call. So you could have called it on the dribble. There was a lot of contact early. So you could make the argument that there were three or four missed calls, including the final one. That he on did that. call. But there was enough contact early to warrant a foul with the dribble drive of Marble. But the cleanest play of it all was the block shot that they end up, end up calling the foul on. Marble hits the free throw as Pringle is guilty of his second. He'll exit now, and Betty Ako will come back in to replace him for the Crimson Tide. A&M, one of the most physical teams in the country, but it's Bama that's been whistled for six. A&M with four. Marble, free throw, up, no good. Rebounded by Gurley. Gives the outlet to JQ, and Bama wants to run. He'll weave it to the center of the floor. He'll dribble to the wing. Tied on top, 21-13, with the ball, leading it by eight with 10 minutes to go first half. Quinterly, three, JQ, you love this place, don't you? Quinterly knocks it home. Another bank first three. The sixth of the half by Alabama, and the Tide leads it by 11. Alabama was six for 12, 12 from three in the second half of Missouri. Same thing here in the first half. Gordon on the drive, stopping, spinning, needs help, throws it away, backcourt, over and back, Bama basketball, the defense spectacular from Nate Oates' squad here today. Alabama getting after it on that end of the floor and making shots, a great combination for this Alabama team and doing it with Brandon Miller and Noah Clowney on the Alabama bench in foul trouble. Bama basketball, Quinterly to inbound at side court near the A&M bench. Gets it in to Griffin, back now to JQ. Driving right, swings it left side. Gurley three, missed it. Rebound, Griffin got pushed. Oh, they're going to say he stepped on the baseline, and he did. It goes out of bounds. Possession will go to the Aggies. Missed open three by Noah Gurley. He's been hot here in the SEC tournament. Three made threes, three for four against Mississippi State. Had a big game yesterday against Missouri. Not able to get that one to go down. Coleman with the basketball. Pivots to his right. He dribbles. Spins back left. He's double teamed. Should have been a tie-up. Throws up a bad shot. Bama comes the other way. Great defense again by Alabama. Smothering the Aggies. JQ on the right side. Gets inside the paint. Gets to the baseline. Underneath the hoop. Pass batted away and stolen by AM. And now a pass ahead. Shot up. Blocked by Gurley. Great defense by the Tide. And we're running the other way. Sears into the lane. Out to Griffin. Down the hill. Back out, Sears stops, dribbles, resets at 20 on the shot clock, looking for a screen, goes to his right, cross it over, to his left, in the lane, floater, no, rebound, tipped into the corner, Griffin with it, baseline, Griffin right side, JQ, JQ with it, 16 on the shot clock, JQ sizing it up, working against the defender, Taylor, oh, might be jelly time, nope, gonna give it off. To Beniaco, to Sears, deep three, no good. Rebound, taken away by Griffin, oh. and then taken away again by AM. Griffin was falling and had to unload it and threw it right to an Aggie. Now Taylor weaving through traffic, stopping on the baseline. Bama making breathing difficult right now for Texas AM. Into the baseline, they'll work it. Going in, they have the dunk block by Beniaco. 
and a foul called on Texas A&M. What great interior defense by Alabama. A possession ago, it was Noah Gurley getting back. Looked like AM was going to have an easy dunk in transition. This time, Henry Coleman tries to dunk it again. Down the nets and win a championship, and both teams playing extremely hard. Fun game to watch so far. Clowney and Miller back on the floor, both with two fouls. Also, Sears, Clowney, and Betty Ako, or Quinterly, I should say, and Betty Ako, the five for Bama. JQ, the lob. Diaco, the catch, the spin, the kick to the wing. Three ball, clowning, no good at the rebound, controlled by AM. Missed opportunity for Bamba as the tide will come the other way. Excuse me, the Aggies do. Floater by Radford, no good. Bediaco, another board for Alabama. That's the eight for Charles, and Bamba comes the other way. And oh. then Miller's no look pass is knocked away and stolen by Taylor. Ahead, he'll throw it to Washington in the left corner. Takes a couple of dribbles, brings it up to the wing, hands it off again, gets a return feed, goes in, lean or no. Rebound tipped, they're going to call Betty Ako oh. for a foul. Betty Ako's getting shoved by Washington, but they call Charles for the foul. One and one opportunity for the Aggies, as Bama's been called now for seven fouls, and Betty Ako is guilty of personal number one. The replay board here at Bridgestone Arena not doing the officials any good fans and coaches upset when they see it live and then on the replay even angrier as a and m goes to the line free throw upcoming from washington for texas a and m solomon washington knocking down the front end he'll get another try texas a and m leads the country in free throw attempts per game they lead the sec in free throw percentage a big key in the win for the Aggies eight days ago was their ability to get to the line and convert. Went to the free throw line 28 times in College Station. They made 27. Washington hits them both, and the Aggies have pulled back to within nine. 24 to 15. Alabama with the ball and the lead. Quinterly being defended by Hefner. Driving left is JQ. Shake and bake move. Trying to get into the lane, and they get Hefner for the hold. And that'll be a one-and-one one upcoming. No, it's only the sixth foul on the Aggies. Don Daly thought certainly that was seven fouls on A&M, but... Well, he's not wrong. Well, it's true. Six, only six calls. Only six calls. Next one would put Bam in the bonus as JQ will inbound it. Looking, gets it in ahead of the count to Betty Ako. Charles will pivot and hand it off to Sears. Sears with 15 on the shot clock. Takes it to the left wing. Drives, hands it off. Quinterly thought about a three. 10 to shoot. He'll spin away from the defender. Taylor at seven. At six. Goes in. Reverse. That one's blocked at the rim. And that's going to be Thank goaltending. You. It was a late whistle, but they got it right. As JQ got it on the glass, they pinned it there. That'll be a goal 10. And Quinterly outstanding in the first half. 11 points in 11 minutes. He is a completely different player than he was two months ago coming back from that knee injury. Matched up one-on-one. -on -one against one of the best perimeter defenders in the SEC and Wade Taylor and JQ able to go right by him and score. Radford brings it ahead for A&M. He works left wing, crosses over, gets into the paint. They give it outside to Hefter. He'll stop. He'll feed it into the corner of Washington. 15 to shoot as Washington finds Radford. Now off the screen from Garcia. Radford will drive. Little floater is up. No good. Ball batted around. Scramble on the deck. Picking it up is JQ. And now he'll start the break. We got numbers. Quinterly front court. Left side Miller. Had it stripped but got fouled. And that personal on Taylor will be his first. Great job by Alabama. Getting the loose ball. The defensive rebound. On the deck, JQ able to get it and go. Started the Alabama fast break, got it out to Brandon Miller, who attacked the basket, hit on the arm. He'll go to the line for two. Alabama wants to play fast, the second fastest team in the country. This AM team, about 280 in tempo. 
Buzz Williams wants to slow it down. That's why you see AM press and a little token pressure. They'd love to get a steal, but it's not designed for a steal. It's designed to slow Alabama down. They haven't been able to here in the first half. Miller hits the first free throw. He's got six points to go with his four boards, three turnovers, and unfortunately, two personal fouls. Misses the free throw. Bediaco got a hand on the rebound, but couldn't control it. And Dennis has it now for AM. Here come the Aggies. Bama up by a dozen. On the drive, Taylor, floater off the glass, no, rebound tip. There's another board for Miller. We got a four-on-one. Bediaco drives in, finger roll, yes. What a play by the seven-footer. I thought it was a mistake for Brandon Miller to give it to him. It was early, but Charles <laughs> Bediaco proving you wrong, Chris Stewart. That was a good decision. <laughs> he doesn't need my help. Timeout, Texas A&M, crowd on its feet again. Twenty-nine to fifteen of mothers. Bediaco and Miller alone, twelve of the seventeen boards. Make that thirteen of the seventeen for Alabama. On the glass, combined between Charles and Brandon. AM basketball. Left side. All alone at the moment. Washington gives it up to Garcia. He'll pivot. Needs help. Finds Taylor. Six to shoot. Taylor double team kicks it into the corner. Three blocked by Bediaco, but into the hands of an Aggie, and then knocked into the hands of Brandon Miller. And Bama wants to run the other way. Brandon stopping left side, still with the dribble alive. Goes left, stops, kicks it right side. Sears back to Brandon. Catch and shoot three. Missed the shot. Rebound snagged by Brandon. Throws it back out to JQ, and a reset to 20 on the shot clock. Down low, Brandon. Nice feed, Bediaco. Got fouled, and he'll go to the line to shoot two and Alabama owning things on both ends of the floor right now. What a rebound by Brandon Miller. Misses the three, but Alabama with a couple of opportunities on the offensive glass. Brandon Miller doing the job offensively by getting those second and third chance opportunities. Miller now with six rebounds. Bediaco at the strike where it's been an adventure at times this year. Charles, under 40%, almost banked that one in. And they're all long. He, he misses almost all of his free throws long. And that one, so long he only, as you mentioned, banked it in. But Charles Bediaco playing so well here late in the season. He has been a difference maker on both ends of the floor here in Nashville. Clowney and Miller will check out. Neither picked up their third in those last few minutes, which was huge. Bediaco, free throw with five to go in the half. Up, no good. Rebound tipped out and controlled by Garcia of Texas A&M. So a missed chance to get the lead to 16. We'll settle at the moment for a 14-point lead. Here's Radford for the Aggies going left, stopping, looking into the corner. Dennis, he'll drive into the lane, spinning into a double team. Spinning, kick it out, throwing it away. Quinterly, front court. Quinterly on the drive. The step through, the shot blocked. That's a goal, 10. Quinterly now with 13 first-half points. Oh, mercy, Javon Quinterly. He has been outstanding. And how about the defense once again by Alabama, led by Charles Bediaco. The block shot started the Alabama fast break at JQ. They are having a hard, hard time keeping JQ in front of them, able to get past the defender, get inside, and another goaltending call with JQ at the rim. Aggies trying to find an answer. Manny Obasaki will check in for Coach Buzz Williams' team. Gurley, Bediaco, Quinterly, Sears, and Bradley are the five on the floor for Alabama. They are, I believe, attending to a cut on Dennis. I don't know if he's coming back in. I guess he's not. Alabama on a 7-0 run the last two minutes. Doing the job defensively, holding the Aggies to one for their last 13. They'll work it to Garcia, right of the circle, and a whistle away from the basketball. They'll get Sears for a hold on Radford, stopping him from cutting through the lane. And with 4.28 to go, it'll be a one-and-one one upcoming for the Aggies. Bama, its biggest lead at 16. 31-15, to 4.28 remaining in the first half.
We'll see Miller come in replacing Sears as Mark picks up his first. One plus the bonus. He was so good in College Station. 10 for 10 from the free throw. He gets the first one to go with a friendly roll. You tried to do the reverse jinx there. Well, you look at Wade Taylor and Tyrese Radford, one of the best backcourts in the SEC, and they get it done from the free throw line. They were combined 20 for 20 from the free throw line in College Station eight days ago. Makes both here. 77% in conference play this year was Radford. His two threes, or free throws, I should say, make it 31-17. Bama with the ball in the lead with 4.18 to go in the half. JQ working against the defender. Obasiki goes to his right, backs it out beyond the arc. Miller being held by Obasiki and slung around, and that will send Brandon to the line and to shoot one plus the bonus. Brandon Miller was asking for that foul for about 15 seconds of the shot clock and finally gets the call. One and one for Brandon Miller. He just missed one, but it was a high pick and roll. Brandon Miller with Javon Quinterly. And the Aggies physical on the defensive end. They've let them play here in Nashville over the course of the SEC tournament. But a couple of kind of touch fouls on both ends of the floor, and this time it goes for Bama. Miller hits the front end of a one and one. And the best player in the country will get another opportunity. Seven points now for him to go with his six boards. Mediaco with uh, eight rebounds as well. Again, they've got 14 of Bama's 18 combined rebounds in this game. He hits both freebies there, and he'll exit. Nate Oates doing a great job of working these guys in and out, trying to avoid a third foul on he or Clowney. So Brandon will go to the bench after making two and giving Alabama a 33-17 lead again with 4.05 to play in the half. Obasiki working against Gurley, now picked up by Jaden Bradley. Taylor off the screen, works into the paint, drives in, hands it off. Ball is going to be blocked by Beniaco, and they call him for his second. Charles must have come down with the left hand because it was clean up top. But on Charles, that will be personal number two. He joins Miller and also Noah Cloudy, who have two personals in the first half. And Griffin are the five out there for Nate Oates. Alabama Crimson Tide and at the stripe for Texas A&M. Solomon Washington shooting two shots with 3.52 to go in the half. First attempt is up and it's good. The Aggies now seven of nine from the free throw line. Bama five of eight here in the first half. They've got 17 boards. Bama's got 18. Aggies only missed one. Eight days ago in College Station. They are really good from the line. They do as good a job or better than anybody in college basketball getting there and one of the best percentage teams as well from the strike. Hit them both, and it's a 33-19 ball game. Bama with possession up by 14. Quinterly with it at the center court strike. Surveying the floor. Dribbling to his right, reversing back to Miller. Brandon dribbles left, keeps the dribble alive, being defended by Garcia. Picks it up, throws it left side to Gurley, hands it back to Brandon. Fade away three, short, rebounded by Bamba, but then taken away Boy, by he, Garcia. He wanted the foul call. It was well contested, a little contact on the forearm, but doesn't get the call. Spinning, shooting, missing is Taylor. Rebounded initially by Miller, and then Garcia claims it for the Aggies. Inside the work at Radford, floater up, no good. Rebound tip, scrambled, and coming out with it is JQ. Quinterly with the basketball, working against Washington. Quinterly between the legs with the dribble, playing off the screen. There goes an Aggie, driving in, shooting, and missing was Quinterly, and A&M will come the other way. Washington got leveled because he ran into a screen he didn't see coming, and that well, his fault. Well, I'm not sure he got leveled as much as we saw an acting job right there. Looked more bad like one. a flop, but it was a good screen. It was a bad one. Wrestling caliber. Inside shot missed. Controlled, though, by AM. Taylor driving against Miller. And then they'll lose a little wet. They're going to call Brandon for a foul as Taylor sold that one. Taylor just completely sold that one to get the third on Brandon Miller. Tough one right there with 2.33 to go in the half. Brandon saying, I got leveled on the other end. 
You didn't call that. And now Taylor. Taylor just threw up something wild. He didn't even get touched. Oh, my gosh. Brandon Miller has three fouls right now, and one of them was a foul, the other two. Ooh. These officials, when they go back and watch film, are going to realize that they are kittens following a ball Ooh. of yarn. They were tricked on that one. And listen, Wade Taylor, one of the best in the SEC at getting to the free throw line, but that one, tough for Alabama sending its star player to the bench with three. Both free throws good by Taylor. And with Brandon on the bench with those three fouls, the tide will come the other way. Up 33-21. You want to finish the half strong as Bama's led it by as many as 16. A&M has not led. Quinterly calling for a screen from Gurley. Gets one. Let's fly from deep. Too strong in the rebound control by the Aggies. They'll throw it ahead to Coleman. Lost it out of bounds. The pass beyond his reach as Taylor's throw was too far. And we paused 10 seconds for station identification on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Quinterly front court for Alabama goes to his right, goes to his left, gets into the paint, cut off, he'll circle back right, he's getting hacked, no whistle. Now to Sears in the left corner at 10, at 9, goes baseline at 7, spins, stops, kicks it to Gurley, now to Griffin at 4, at 3, to JQ at 2, lets it fly, no, he lost sight of the clock, and Alabama turns it over with a minute 37 to go in the half, leading 33 to 21. JQ hasn't made many mistakes in this game, but that was one. Should have let it fly. Had a great look at the shot clock. Caught it with about two seconds left. Pump fake dribbled. Shot clock violation. Mistake by the veteran. A&M with the basketball. They are 0 for their last 10 from the field, but they've been scoring at the line. They'll shoot a fall away up, miss it again. Rebound fought for on the deck, a scramble, and a tie-up, and the arrow is going to favor Alabama. Nick Pringle first to the floor, tied up by Garcia, and the arrow favors Alabama with a minute 17 to go in the half. Great effort by both teams. Alabama not able to secure the defensive rebound, but the hustle play by a couple guys in crimson and white, Noah Gurley being called upon because of the foul trouble to Noah Clowney and Brandon Miller. Alabama's bench doing a good job, especially on the defensive end. Alabama 6 of 18 from bank first, three-point range. The Aggies 1 of 4. Quinterly front court for the tie. Quinterly working against Obasiki. Gives it off. Gets a return pass. Quinterly directing traffic. Going to his right, getting the elbow spinning into the lane, kicking it out, Sears, top of the arc. Eight to shoot, Sears down the lane, fires it over to Griffin at six, at five. Griffin at four, driving in, that's going to be a push on Texas A&M. A foul with three on the shot clock, 49 to play in the half. Rylan Griffin was running out of real estate and thankfully got knocked to the deck by Garcia. And Rylan will go to the stripe to shoot one plus the bonus. Actually, it's two shots as both teams are at the limit. Well, I thought Rylan had taken it into no man's land, Brian, but thankfully the foul was whistled correctly on the Aggies as the free throw is missed by Ryland. He's been a good shooter as well, but couldn't get that one to go in his first attempt. Second try upcoming. As Griffin waits on Don Daly to give him the basketball. 49.8 seconds to go in the half. Second free throw is good, and it's 34 to 21. Bama not scored in three and a half minutes before that free throw, and yet still maintain a double-digit lead. Front court, Taylor to the elbow marble. Now top of the arc to Taylor. Dennis now right of the circle, down low to Marble, posting up on Pringle. Spence, jump hook, got it to go over Nick. And with 30 seconds to go in the half, Bama should likely hold it for one, leading 34 to 23. 
Bradley directing traffic. Half second differential, shot clock in the game clock. Bama wants to drain the rest of this first half clock. 10, 9, Bradley at 8, at 7, Bradley at 6, at 5, at 4, to Sears at 3, at 2, let's fly at 1, it hits the side of the glass, the horn sounds, the half ends, and Alabama will go to the locker room with an 11-point lead, 34-23, to 23. it was not perfect Brian passing, but we'll take 11-point advantage at the break, despite the struggles in the final four minutes. Yeah, Brandon Miller with three fouls, Noah Clowney with two, Charles Bediaco with two. So Alabama overcoming some adversity. The bench has stepped up, but a little run from Texas A&M late. Alabama's up 16, but you'll take 11 at the break. Hopefully Alabama can regroup and get Brandon Miller going. Our visit with the coach at the half brought to us as always by Cook's Pest Control and Centricon, the unbeatable combination for termite protection. Appreciate Cook's Pest Control and their partnership with us for years here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. In just a moment, Coach Nate Oates will join Brian Passick as he's finished up with TV. Coach, thoughts on the first half? Too passive at the end of the first half on offense. You know, defensively, we're fouling too much. You know, we got seven turnovers. That's too many. You know, Brand Brandon's got three. Brandon's, Brandon's going to pick it up in the second half, I think. Thank you, Coach. Clowney, that is. You're five on the floor for the Crimson Tide. 20 minutes to play in regulation. Bama leading 34-23, but A&M will get the ball first to begin the second half. Been a while since they've had it to single digits against the Tide. They've got it on the right wing. They go to Dennis, top of the arc. They'll throw it low post. They'll, stand, they'll shoot, they'll score. They'll get it to nine as Marble got it deep, was able to score. Now Miller the other way for Alabama. Drive it to the baseline. You know they're going to flop whenever he is around somebody. He'll stand in and give it off to Clowney. Back to Miller. Now to Sears near side. He hit a three to start the game for Bama, but nothing since then. He's one for three. Now Quinterly with it out high. Nate Oates moving the chess pieces. Miller left to the circle, fakes it three. Drives, spins, kicks it near side, Sears at two. And he stepped on the sideline. That's a rough start to half number two for Alabama. They give up a bucket on one end and then turn it over late in the shot clock on another. The concern for Alabama is because of the foul trouble, will that take away their intensity on the defensive end? Charles with two fouls not is aggressive on the interior, and the result, an easy jump hook for the Aggies to start the half. Dennis in the corner, no good. Rebound, though, playing on the weak side by Taylor. Poked away by Sears. Scramble on the deck. A&M gets it. Taylor at three. That's no good. Rebounded by Miller, and Brandon will start the break the other way. Ahead to JQ. The lob, Bediaco missed it. Got it back, shot it, and he calls JQ another assist. <laughs> Two of them today. And JQ doesn't mind as Charles able <laughs> to get his miss, put it back off the glass, and then Alabama in transition with an easy layup. Coleman throws it right side to Dennis. Dennis will throw it to Radford. Left jumper, no good. Rebound tipped into the hands of Miller. And boy, Brandon now with eight boards to go with eight points. Bama the other way, Sears driving the lane. The kick, JQ, left side, three, missed it. Rebound tip, Clowney, no. Scramble, and A&M comes away with the ball. Nate Oates wanted a foul call, didn't get a whistle on the Aggies. Now A&M front court with Bama leading at 36-25. Taylor from the elbow, shot up, no good. It was altered again by Betty I and then stepping on the baseline was Coleman, and Bamba will get it back. Nate Oates wanted the foul as Noah Clowney went for the tip in on the offensive rebound, got hit on the forearm, no call. And good stop, good job defensively, forcing a difficult shot from Wade Taylor. In the first matchup, Wade Taylor, Tyrese Radford combined for 49 points. Just six combined here in this one, but you know they're going to go to him. Bama with the basketball, front court, Sears, left side three, no rebound claimed by the Aggies. It was Coleman who snared that one. We've had some chances to really bust it open, but lead by 11. Radford on the drive, going downhill, leader no good, rebounded, and now a foul is going to be called on Clowney, and that'll be his third. Clowney called for the foul as Coleman got the loose ball. 
One of the reasons why Texas A&M leads the country in free throw attempts per game is they get you in foul trouble. On the offensive glass, second chance opportunity. Alabama in a vulnerable situation, and Clowney gets called for the foul. Inside they go to Coleman. Shot blocked by Mediaco, and Bama will run the other way. Here comes JQ. Left side, Sears. Miller catches the three. No. Rebound caught inside. Clowney, he gets his first points on the slam dunk, and Bama leads by 13 with 17. 17 to go. Even though Brandon Miller missed the shot, Texas A&M not able to set their defense. No blockout assignments and no Clowney with the offensive rebound. Shot up and in with a left hand by Radford over three Bama defenders. And the Tide has the ball with 17 minutes to go, leading 38-27. JQ on the drive. Got tripped inadvertent, but hits the deck hard. Gets helped up by the man who committed the foul. That's Taylor. And that will be his second personal. Quinterly to inbound it right in front of us. 16.58 to go. Quinterly gets to Miller. Back to JQ. He'll drive left. He'll go down the lane. He'll lay it up with a left hand and get it to go. Javon Quinterly working his magic. He's got 15. AM was coming with the double team, trying to get the ball out of the hands of JQ, but too fast as he finishes at the rim with those left hands. Radford working from the elbow. Stop, start, move. Kicks it back out. Three ball. Dennis is good. A big three there from Dennis from Texas A. And to cut the Bama lead to 10, but Miller on the drive the other way. Leader no, put back no. Ball tipped up and controlled by the Aggies. Here comes Taylor the other way. Throws it left side. Radford for three. That rims out. Rebound tip long. Controlled by Clowney. Outlet pass to Sears. On the drive, Bart to the trailer. JQ three. His world just limited it right now. Jelly time. And great job by Mark Sears getting in the lane. The defense had to converge. JQ, wide open, steps into it, knocks it down, and listen to this Alabama crowd. 43 to 30 here in Nashville. Radford Leaner quiets the crowd momentarily. And Clowney fortunate he wasn't called for personal number four. Well, that was good defense. Principal vert verticality stayed upright. Could have been, if anything, an offensive foul. I don't disagree. i just been watching this one. The three. This time missed by JQ, but rebounds it. Gives it off to Sears. Your turn. Can't get it to go, and the rebound is controlled by Washington for Texas A&M. Aggies down 10, bringing it front court. Actually, an 11-point Bama lead. Dennis Foster misses the three. Rebound to Clowney, and Alabama will get it to Miller. And now the Tide will push it up with 15-15 to go. Miller near side. Down low, Betiaco. Great catch in traffic. Spin, shoots, scores, and he's been phenomenal. And the strength of Charles Betiaco. He's got great hands. It was tough in there. There was contact, but he was able to catch the ball, go up strong, and finish. 13-point lead, timeout, Texas A&M. 14.55 to go, Bama 45, A&M 32. Matchup in College Station. Miller and Clowney on the floor with three fouls apiece. 14.52 left to play in the ball game. Radford with it for Texas A&M. Dribbling right, kicking it down low now. They'll back in with Marble. Jump hook over Mediaco short. Rebound Clowney. Got pushed from behind and they'll call the foul on Texas A&M and Garcia. Are they going to look at this and see if there's a hook on this play? They're talking it over. You had Clowney and Garcia tangled up. It does become a full timeout right here as we were due immediate timeout on the net. All that goes to the Alabama bench with four fouls. Big call in favor of the Aggies. My late father had a great expression that fits right here. Man, these guys would mess up a two-car funeral. 14.30 and ticking time left. Alabama with the ball and the lead. 45-32. Clowney on the bench as Bradley is in to Miller, working his way through traffic. Puts up a tough shot, no good, but got fouled, and he will go to the line to shoot two. So typically, when there are flagrant fouls called, the officials will tighten things up. Alabama needs to adjust on the defensive end. Right there, a foul against Texas A&M. I'm not sure that would have been a foul call earlier in the game, but I would expect this game to be called tighter than 14-21 means you better take advantage of your opportunities at the strike, which Alabama does there. 
7 of 11 from the free throw line. A&M 10 of 12. Miller hits the first. Second one up for coming, and it's perfect as well. And it also means that Brandon Miller's got to be extra careful. Yes. He's got three. Noah Clowney already on the Alabama bench with four. 14, 14. The time left. Right side, Aggies work it to Obasik. He worked it against Miller. Spinning, stopping, far away shot. Left hand is good. Brandon couldn't be quite as aggressive right there. As we talked about, the delay of game warning whistled on Marble as they were holding the ball as it came through the net, slowing Alabama's transition opportunity up. 14.05 to go. Bama leading 47 to 34. Front court with it is the tie. Bradley. Working, center of the floor, playing off the screen. Miller goes left, goes to the rim, had a shot attempt blocked by Marble, and now the Aggies will come the other way. May have forced that one a bit there to Jaden Bradley. Radford working left side, crossing over, getting downhill, leads in to Pediaco. Couldn't get the whistle, but did get the bucket, and the lead's down to 11. Big trip right here for Bama. Don't want this thing to get any closer. Near side Bradley against the A&M defense. JQ directing traffic. Working right of the circle. Now backing it out again. 15 to shoot. JQ trying to split defenders. Lost it. Still for Marble. He'll go in. He'll dunk it. And the lead is down to nine points. Bama the other way with Miller. Catch and shoot three. Too strong. Rebounded to Brandon. He'll spin baseline. Brandon with a reset. Will back it out. Looking, finding Bradley. Oh. Bradley with it now, with 12 on the shot clock. Bama up, 47-38. Bradley left to the circle, playing through contact, got fouled by Marble. Again, the Aggies wanting a hook, but he's trying to keep from falling down as Marble was hitting him with a hip check. After that foul, fourth foul call, the double flagrant, sending Noah Clowney to the bench, a 6-0 run for the Aggies, cutting this Alabama lead that was 15 down to single digits. 12.53 to play. 47-38, Alabama the ball on a nine-point lead. Poise, fellas, poise. Inbounded to Sears. Sears trying to work away from a double team. Gives it off to Miller. Brandon with 15 to shoot. Brandon working right side. Goes baseline. It's tough leaner. Blocked out of bounds by Obasiki. And Bama will get the ball with nine on the shot clock. 12.41 to go in the second half. And the Tide still on top, 47-38. We'll see Taylor check in. And Radford check out for AM. Alabama's got to go fairly quickly. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Bradley trying to inbound it. Beats the count, getting it into Betty Aco. Nice catch high. Eight, seven. Now to Bradley at six. At five. Bradley at four. Stepping through. That's going to be an offensive foul on Jaden Bradley. Bama out of sync offensively, and you can tell more spring in the step for the fight in Texas Aggies. Late shot clock situation, Texas A&M so good at sliding over, taking the charge. They've done that several times in this game. Jaden Bradley trying to get to the rim. You love his aggressiveness, but took it one dribble too many. Taylor with the basketball, front court for A&M. Throws it right side. On the drive is Gordon. Throws it right side, stolen by Miller. Brandon got tripped, and they're going to call a foul on Texas A&M. And that one was a right call. He got tripped. They're going to call that every time, but that is a fast break. Alabama had numbers. Probably would have gotten a layup. They'll have to reset it, but the 15th foul for the Aggies. Fourth personal on Marble, matching the four on Noah Clowney. That's not an even swap, although Marble does have nine points in a couple of boards in just 12 minutes of work. Gordon will exit, replaced by Dennis. That was a really good defensive play by Brandon Miller. Able to get in the passing lane, start the Alabama fast break, and pick up the foul on the Aggies. Bama with the basketball. Gives it off to Miller, facing the basket. Calling for a screen, gets it. Picks up the dribble, swings it near side to Noah Gurley, who's checked in. Gurley cut off on the baseline to Miller. Catch and shoot. Oh, so pretty. We had a perfect angle, and it found nothing but the bottom of the sack. And Bama leads by 12, 11.53 to go on the bank first three. A&M the other way, misses. Rebound claimed by A&M, out of bounds. Touch last by the Crimson Tide. 
11.48 to go. Bama 50, A&M 38 on Sears, Quinterly, and Miller. The five on the floor for Alabama, 19 to shoot, 11.48 to play for A&M. Bama a 50 to 38 lead. Obaski gets it in to Taylor. Taylor bringing it back out high with Quinterly guarding him. Taylor with the dribble with the right hand and the shot clock down to 10. Now it's at nine. Taylor at seven, picks it up, gives it off to Dennis. He slipped. He slipped and oh. the ball bounces off the chest of Quinterly out of bounds. But no possession changed hands there. So it's only four seconds left on the shot clock for Texas A&M. They'll mop up some moisture on the deck. Oh, missed opportunity there. Alabama needs to close out this defensive possession. Again, Texas A&M, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the SEC. They're going to have to go quick, but got to close it out on the defensive board if they miss. Taylor will inbound it. Does so to Dennis. Catch and shoot three. That's perfect. And Bamba can't end it right. Boy, Nate Oates was living that Alabama got caught underneath the screen, didn't defend it well, and missed the chance as the lead is down to nine. 50 to 41, 11 18 to play. Oh, should have been a turnover. Alabama with a great defensive possession. And Ends with a three for the Aggies. See if the Tide can answer back. Here's Miller with it out high, working between the circles. Gives it near side, JQ. Quitterly directing traffic, sends Sears the other way. Quitterly going baseline, leads in. Nice feed, Pringle, the shot wouldn't go, but he's fouled, and Nick will go to the line for a pair of free throws with 11 minutes remaining. The patience and decision-making by Javon Quinterly. Able to wait for that play to develop. Look like a &M was going to come with a double team because of the spacing of Alabama. They weren't able to do it. JQ goes baseline, drops it off to Nick Pringle, who will go to line for two. Pringle, not the best free throw shooter that Alabama has to offer. Is he short on that attempt? Boy, it could have been an and one attempt instead. Two free throws, and now Nick who's made only 48% of his tries from the free throw line in conference play. We'll have another one upcoming here. Free throw up, free throw perfect. Nice job, one of two for Pringle. And with 11 minutes to go, Bama leads by 10, 51-41. Aggies hurry at front court, left side with Obaski. Obaski working against JQ, works inside, gets to the rim. They're gonna call a foul on Nick Pringle. They call him for a reach there. Third personal now on Pringle. A&M's made four of their last five from the field, and they'll get to the free throw line, where, as we told you, they've been extremely good this year. Obasaki himself, a 78% free throw shooter on the season. 10.50 on the game clock. 16 fouls on A&M, four on Alabama, another free throw good by Obasaki, who's got now three points. Aggies 11 of 13 from the strike, Bama 9 of 14. Second one up, second one good. And with 10.50 to go, the Bama lead is cut to 51-43. It's as close as A&M has been since about midway through the first half. Bama basketball, Miller on the right wing. Miller gets it to JQ, back to Miller, right of the circle, fakes a pass, steps left, three ball, in and out, no good, rebound tip to himself, Miller a great board, out to Gurley, one more JQ, his three, too strong, rebounded Gurley, back out, Griffin, your turn, too short, rebound Miller underneath, the fourth try for the Tide, and a timeout called, I believe Noah Foul is going to be whistled on Texas A&M. And that'll be a one and one coming up for Brandon Miller, Alabama getting on the offensive glass. We talked about AM's ability to get second and third chance opportunities. This time it's Alabama and Miller goes to the line for a one and one. Ain't going to be easy as a partner. Championship game against one of the top teams in the SEC playing like one of the top teams in the country. Didn't think this was going to be easy. That hasn't been the case. And Brandon Miller for the chance to extend the Alabama lead. Miller 7 of 8. Make it eight of nine from the free throw line as he hits the front end of the one and one. He's got 13 or 14 points now to go with his 12 rebounds in this contest. Second attempt, up. second attempt, good. 10-20 to play, Bama, 53-43, a 10-point lead 
over the Aggies. The Tides made only one of its last seven from the field, but just made two free throws. Obasik, he tried to drive against Quinterly. Goes inside, leaner off the glass, no. Rebound tip controlled by Gurley. Bama will push it the other way. Ahead to Miller. Stops near side. Three, bottom. Alabama gets the stop. Great defensive possession. JQ moving his feet. That started the Alabama fast break. Another timeout from Doug Buzz Williams. And listen to this Alabama crowd here in Nashville. 30-second timeout. Nine and 17 offensive rebounds. The misses don't hurt quite as bad when you're getting second and third chance opportunities at it. Aggies with the ball. Garcia to Taylor. Double team. Gives it off to Garcia. He'll drive it. Betiaco, nice speed, and the dunk for two is good by Washington. Great entry pass there. Alabama double team Wade Taylor able to get out of it. They had numbers go into the basket, and the result, an easy dunk. 56 45, Bama by 11 with nine and a half to play. Quinterly going right side. Quinterly cut off at the elbow, backs it out beyond the arc. 15 to shoot, goes left side, Miller. Brandon working against Taylor, gets into the lane, stops, looks, gives it outside. Gurley on the drive, cut off, five to shoot, spinning left, going baseline, tough, all the way, no, but he's fouled, and Noah Gurley, man, has he been big off the bench for Alabama this weekend. Had to go with a late shot clock situation, Noah Gurley, Brandon Miller, wanted to get the ball, to Alabama star freshman, but great defense by AM denying Brandon Miller the pass, but Noah Gurley able to reverse field, shoot a fadeaway, gets hit on the arm, and a couple of big free throws coming up for the veteran. The Furman transfer from a couple of years ago gets his first point with 9-12 remaining in this contest and pushes the Bama lead back up to 12. It's 57-45. A deep breath. Gurley. Got the roll. I tell you what, it hung for a half hour on that rim, but it fell through. It went 9 10 to go. Bama leads by 13. 58 45. Here come the Aggies. Taylor, the floater in the paint, a great move, and an offensive foul. Or excuse no. me. Excuse me. I'm sorry. A foul is called on Alabama and he will go to the line for a chance at the end one. Taylor got hacked and a great bucket by Taylor and fouled in the process. Wade Taylor had missed his all eight of his field goal attempts. High pick and roll, beautiful play, spin move as he let it go before Charles Bediaco could get there. Big three point play opportunity for Wade Taylor, one of the best guards in America. Alabama's held him in check, but as we said, the type of player that can get it going and do it quickly. Five points now for Taylor after that make, and with nine minutes to go, Bama's lead is down to 10 again. Here's Brandon with the basketball, throwing it left side to JQ. Back to Miller, working against the defender Washington. I think he likes this matchup, 15. Crossing, dishing, right side, Gurley. He'll give it off, JQ. Quinterly at nine, at eight. Quinterly at seven, at six. Into the paint at five. Spinning, looking, Betiaco at three. Out to Miller at one. Short, rebound, tipped to the hands of Chuck. Betiaco spins, looks, back out to JQ. Alabama will reset it to 20 on that shot clock. Now 18 yeah. offensive rebounds for Alabama. This time, Charles Betiaco. Miller likes this matchup against Hefter. Crossing over, spinning, getting to the baseline, working away from a double team. Throws up a tough shot, no. Rebound, Betiaco off the glass, no. Rebound, fought for, claimed by Washington. And the Aggies will come the other way with eight minutes to go and Bama leading by 10. Taylor with it right side. Bama finding him in a hurry. Gurley's drawing the assignment on him. Taylor says clear out. Calling for a screen from Washington, gets it, plays off of it, hesitates, gets into the paint, bounce pass, shot, block, Betiaco, into the hands, though, of Garcia, back out to Taylor at seven, at six, Taylor at five, at four, offensive foul, Brandon Miller took the charge, it was 7.39 to go, Bama will have it, up 10 when we come back. Stay with us here with four personals and 7.39 to play in the contest. 
Miller will inbound it for Bama, leading by 10, 58-48. Quinterly front court for the Crimson Tide. Working, looking, giving it off to Miller. Look behind you, Brandon Pivots. Still with the ball, looking, Betty Ako, triple team, right corner, clown three, right off the bench, right into the basket, and oh, baby, a 13-point Bama lead with 7.17 to go. And we mentioned Charles Betty Ako's numbers, at an assist to that, a big one as Alabama went inside and kicked it out. Dennis tried to answer, missed it, rebound, picked up Betty Ako, and Bama got it going its way with seven minutes to go, Charles, leading by 13. Charles making plays everywhere. Miller. Dagger! Another bank first three. Brandon Miller giving Bama its biggest lead. Timeout A&M. Man, I love this team. Man, I love this team. 6.46 to go in Bama. Its biggest advantage at 64 to 48. We asked to make Bridgestone Arena, Coleman Coliseum North here on Championship Sunday, and that is exactly what we have. What a great atmosphere. Everybody, almost everybody in the building in crimson and white. It feels like a home game. It's going to feel like a home game in Birmingham next week for the NCAA tournament. We're just a few hours away from Alabama being announced as a number one seed for first time in program history in the NCAA tournament. But right now it's about securing an SEC tournament title already, a regular season title in hand. Alabama cut down the nets after beating the Auburn Tigers, coming back from 17 down to win the regular season title. About a week and a half ago, a chance to get the double, the regular season and tournament title. This program did it under Dane Oates a couple of years ago here in Nashville. Chance to do it again, but what a run by Alabama. Another championship. Whip Sanderson was so good in these SEC tournaments. What was it, eight finals in 10 years? So good. Tenato, off, yeah, off to a great start. Sorry, Coach, I didn't mean to short you on those. On the drive, Radford stepping back, shooting a 12-footer short, rebound tipped up, Clowney grabbed by Griffin, Bama coming the other way, leading it by 16. Left side, Miller, do it again, baby. In and out, no good, but rebound, Betty Ako. JQ thought about it. Now he'll cross over. Now he'll go between the legs. Goes right. Goes down the lane. Off the glass and in. And that is 18-point lead. And that is Mr. March, Javon Quinterly. He's got 20. On the drive, Radford. Leader, no. Rebound tip. Fault for Clown. He's got it. Bama running again. Front court. Quinterly spinning, looking. Bounce pass. Miller fakes a pass. Spins. Kicks it out. Ryland three. Oh, the floodgates are open. And it is absolutely a crimson flood here in Nashville. An attack has been called on Alabama and I think Javon Quinterly. Terry Oglesby, the head of the fun police, calling the tee right there. And Nate Oates telling them, guys, we're done talking. Go play. You understand the emotion. Don't well, know what we, happened, but the referees don't understand the emotion. You're right. Chris, the technical was on the coaches, not on gotcha. Clowney. Thank you. Radford shooting the tee and hitting it. Well, they say it's oh. a Class A tech on Quinterly is what they put on the stat monitor. They said it's on Quinterly. And again, Terry Oglesby doing Terry Oglesby things. And the two technical free throws cut the Bama lead to 19. Boy, what a performance by Alabama. Four out of their last five. Texas A&M hasn't made a field goal in over three minutes. Alabama able to extend this lead because of their defense. And, of course, Brandon Miller with 21. He's 4 for 14 from the three-point line. And JQ, man who loves March, who loves this building. Alabama looking great. 
to get the double and win the SEC tournament. 69 to 50. Bama with the lead. AM with the ball. Steel Miller lost out of bounds. Touch last by the Aggies. And that is why Brandon Miller is the best player in the country. He has made big plays on both ends of the floor while in foul trouble. You know about his offensive numbers, the leading freshman score in the country, but he gets it done on both ends. Bama with the basketball, far side Quinterly. To Miller now, pivots, looks inside, Cloudy the flush, throws it down on Garcia, and Alabama with 5.25 to go, has completely taken over, 71 to 50. Bama looking like champions. Three balls, Dennis. No. Rebound fought for. Saved by AM. Taken away by Griffin. Ahead, Bama works it to Miller on the wing. Driving to the corner. Hesitates. Gets underneath. Griffin, a defender, flies by. He shoots it in his face. He misses. And a foul is going to be called on Beniaco. And frankly, while that is his fourth, did us a favor calling it because AM was going to get a run out. Yeah. Good ball movement. Alabama able to get the stop. Rylan Griffin, who knocked down a three a few possessions ago, had an open look, but the long rebound went right to the Aggies. They had a two-on-one, maybe two-on-zero oh, fast break. So not a bad foul at all from Charles Bediaco, who has been so good in this game. Charles with 10 points, 13 rebounds, five block shots. He's finished a bunch more. One and one missed by Dennis, and Bama's got the ball with under five minutes to play. 71 to 50. JQ to Miller. Driving left, down low, Bediaco got pushed, kept his balance, throws it out. JQ driving the lane, stopping, looking, Bediaco lays it in for two more. And one, didn't call it, got fouled, finished anyway in Alabama. Rolling here in Nashville. 73 to 50. Obasaki pivots, gives it off, marble on the drive, spinning, shooting, wild shot, altered by Bediaco, even though he never touched it. And the tide will come the other way. Here's Quinterly front court, driving to his right, cut off on the baseline, throws it off of Dennis out of bounds, and possession will stay with the Crimson Tide. What a performance by Javon Quinterly. 20 points, 8 for 14 from the field. Three rebounds, three assists. Ought to have six assists. He's had teammates miss open layups. But he has looked like the SEC tournament MVP from two years ago. Inside they go. Nice move. Shot Griffin. No good. Rebound of the miss. Put it back up and again. Got it to go. Ryland Griffin. So tough. Skinny as a rail. Good Lord. He's got to run around to get wet in a rainstorm. But he got that one done. Taylor on the other end. Knocks down a three. And answers. And Alabama's lead is down to 22. Front court Miller to the rack. Oh! Obasaki the other way. Throws it down low. Batted out of bounds. And the world still shaking after Brandon Miller threw it down. We're about to bring another one back to Tuscaloosa. 3.40 to go. Bama 77. Texas A&M 53 on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. A commanding 77-53 lead after being up at halftime by 11. A&M to inbound the basketball. They'll get it in quickly to Coleman, but it's deflected out of bounds. Touch last by the Tide. Only a second going off the clock. Inbounds again, upcoming from Taylor. Looking, looking, just beats the count, getting it in to Dennis. He'll drive in, runner in, no good, and they call a foul on Betty Aka. Or Charles now, I'm sorry, I'm lost. Bediaco fouled out, 12 points, seven rebounds, five blocks, and a standing ovation. 
flirting with a, a triple-double. Charles Benyako, what an SEC tournament he's had. We know what he could do on the defensive end, but it has been a total game for Charles Bediaco on the offensive end, finishing around the basket. The time he's put in the weight room has really paid off. He's able to score with contact against a physical AM team, and he was terrific in this one. 12 points, 13 rebounds, the five blocks, phenomenal. Two free throws good by Dennis. Alabama's lead down to 22, and Alabama's going to run some clock right here. Miller on the drive, getting downhill, tough shot, baseline no, tip follow no, rebounded by the Aggies, and they'll push it ahead with Radford. Over to Taylor, a deep three to the right side is good. And you know they're not going away. 77-58 with three minutes to go. Bama can't stop playing right here. Well, unless they're going to add about 10 or 15 minutes to the clock, it's going to be too little, too late for the Aggies. I like your your idea better. 19-point <laughs> lead, 77-58. Bama with the ball in the lead. JQ on the drive, crossing over, going down the lane. His pass deflected and stolen away. Here comes Dennis the other direction. Has it on the wing, and a tee has just been called on Nate Oates. Technical foul on Nate Oates, as whistled by Don Daly. There is not one bit of any of this that surprised me when I saw the assignment sheet for today's game. This is exactly what I expected. There are times where you can look at the coaching staff when they feel like, okay, that could have been a technical problem. Probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> you know, it's a shot that they call the technical on that. It's an intense game. It's an emotional game. It's a championship game. Both free throws good by Taylor, and A&M will have the ball with 2.41 to go as the Bama leads down to 17. And Nate Oates coaching his group up says don't lose any of the emotion. I love the fact that Nato's defending his players even up at the time, 19, 20 points. Felt like there was a foul call. The officials swallowed their whistle. And he let them know about it. Dennis, baseline jumper up, no good. Weak side rebound claimed by the Aggies and Marble. Outside to Taylor, one more Dennis. He's three, in and out, no good. Rebound, fought for and picked up <laughs> by Riley Griffin as Noah Clowney got knocked into the baseline. Here comes JQ the other way. Hesitates, backs it out. And Bama will bleed more clock with 2.18 to go. JQ's got a big smile on his face right now already with 20 points. Some fun coming up as he works against Marble. Driving right, getting by him, and that's the fifth on Marble, and his day is done. <laughs> Look at these Alabama players, smiles everywhere. Probably about, I don't know, 15,000 Alabama fans in the building. 10,000 plus for sure, and everyone standing, enjoying chance for this team to win another championship. So much success in the SEC tournament from this program in the 80s, early 90s under Whip Sanderson. Nate Oates, Rick Pitino, Whip Sanderson, three of the all-time greats percentage-wise in this SEC tournament. Nate Oates will move to 6-1 and one in SEC tournament play. Boy, in this league, as good as it's been since Coach Oates has been here, to go 6-1 in the tournament, an incredible accomplishment for him in this program. Quinterly, free throw up, free throw good. So happy for JQ, 21 points now. Miller is done and a standing ovation for Brandon. Brandon Miller, the SEC Player of the Year. Checks out with 23 points, 12 rebounds in his hometown. Just down the road in Antioch, suburb of Nashville. Boy, what a homecoming for Brandon Miller. And Quinterly exits to the same round of applause. Mr. March, JQ. A lot more of that to be played. Uh, Sears in to replace him. 
Aiden with the basketball. Brown is checked in. They'll give it off to a basket. He's driving the lane. Runner up. No good. Rebounded by Clowney. And he will give it off to Jaden Bradley. And Alabama's in no hurry. A minute 50 to go. Leading it by 19 against Texas A&M. Bradley on the drive. Leaves it for the trailer. Clowney, the exclamation point. Alabama running clock, and it hasn't been a great day for Noah Clowney. He's been in foul trouble, but he's made big plays when he's been in. Beautiful pass, and the exclamation point for the champions. The reaction is Adams' shooting shirt just came off. An air ball shot by AM. The rebound put back up and in for two by Brown. Bama with the ball and a 19-point lead with a minute to go, and Nate Oates a timeout. So that the third wave can come in. Delaney Hurd, Jaden Quinterly. They join Ryland Griffin. The likely number one national seed in next week's NCAA basketball tournament, likely in Birmingham. It's going to be Alabama with more hardware in tow. Quinterly the drive, the kick. Hurd on his drive, puts it up off the glass short, rebound fought for, and a foul is going to be called on the Crimson Tide with 48 seconds to go. Alabama doing what they had to do here in Nashville. Didn't finish the regular season the way they wanted. Able to win an SEC regular season championship. But did not play quite as well down the stretch. Well, that is changed here in the SEC tournament. Brown inside, pump fake, shot short, rebound Pringle ahead to Quinterly. 30 seconds to go. He'll bring it ahead. He'll drive. Quinterly, tough shot, no good, but he's fouled, and he'll go to the line with two shots upcoming. The Quinterly brothers have already combined for 22 points. <laughs> JQ, we'll say he's done most of that so damage. Good. JQ, too, with a chance to add to it. Free throw up. A little strong on that attempt. Can't imagine anything tougher than sitting as long as those guys have to sit. Then you come in, adrenaline going, but oh, man. Listen, maybe tough, but fun with these guys. Jake having a ball. Second. One of two for Quinterly. 20-point Bama lead. Final 22 seconds. Upcoming here. Pratt with the basketball. Dribbling to his right. Poked away from Iron and a foul is going to be called on Quinterly. First personal on Jaden. And two shots upcoming for AM in Pratt. I'm greedy. I really want to win by 20 plus again against an SEC opponent. Might get my wish as he missed with 15.6 to go. Nate Oates wants to get, I think, Cottrell a shot in the final 15 seconds. The lead's down to 19. Bama's going to inbound it against full court pressure by the Aggies. Cottrell will get it ahead. Bounce pass to Hurd. Nate says, nope, that's enough. No more shots. Six, five, and the final seconds will tick away. And enjoy it, folks. Bama champions again. champions once again and we're going to get the head coach Nate Oates joining us as this Alabama Crimson Tide claims the SEC crown 
for the second time. Tournament and regular season. Coach putting on the headset. Congratulations, my guy. In a moment. Still accepting congratulations from Carl Ravitch, Jimmy Dykes. But very kind to come to us first. Coach, congratulations. Unbelievable effort. Yeah, it was good. I mean, our guys came out. They played hard. You know, we didn't close the half like we wanted, but I thought we did a great job opening it up there in the second half. You know, Brand Brandon's groin was hurting him. He, he could barely walk. You know, they, they got Clark did a great job getting him ready to go, but showed a lot of toughness with, you know, how he played with the groin injury. Ended up with a double-double. Charles had a double-double. You know, I thought he impacted, you know, five blocks to go with 12 and 13. Clowney had nothing at the half. Kind of challenged him. He ended up with 9 and 11. So he had a great second half for us. And, you know, you can't say enough about how well JQ plays here in March. I mean, he's peaking at exactly the right time. So, you know what? It was good to see Sears his first shot. I was happy for him. We need to get him going uh, next week in the tournament. Hopefully we can get him going a little bit. You did this with the team effort. I know the stats are great for Miller, but Coach, unbelievable that you could accomplish what you accomplished late in that first half with the foul trouble for Brandon and for Noah. I mean, in the, the first half as a whole, you, you weren't able to go full minutes, full strength, and yet it showed, I thought, the depth and toughness of your team to do what you did. Yeah, no, Noah Gurley, I, you know, super proud of him. I mean, he stepped up, played well for us in this tournament after not playing some, you know, the matchups line better to play him, and he played well. You know, he gave us good minutes when uh, Clowney was out. Brandon ends up only having three fouls, so kind of sometimes you need to roll with your guys, even in foul trouble. We tried to get out of the half with him only getting two. He picked up the third, so we kind of had to sit him at that point. But I thought, I thought, I thought you know, he does a good job playing with fouls. He wish he'd do a better job not getting in foul trouble to start with, though. But looking forward to selection show, seeing where uh, – I think you know, you're in. I think we're in. <laughs> we're not on the bubble. That, that's nice to be not on the bubble. So, you know, we'll see our matchups are. We'll, we're going to give them tomorrow off, make sure their bodies get uh, rested, and we'll get ready to play. I think I think it's Thursday in Birmingham, if I'm correct. So hopefully we, for me. Hopefully we turn Birmingham into a big, huge roll, roll Tide convention. Coach, could not be happier for you, your staff, but especially your wonderful young men that we're honored to have a chance to work with. Thank you so much, and congratulations again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Coach Nate Oates with us. Champions of the Southeastern Conference, both regular season and tournament. Undisputed champions. That is, and a man who takes off his brand-new SEC championship hat to put on the headset, the veteran, yes, Noah sir. Gurley. Congratulations again, champ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, go celebrate with your team. They're getting a trophy, and okay. I don't want you to miss out on that. I, I think that's about to happen. Go celebrate. We'll talk right, we'll to get, you later. Yes, sir. All right. Thank but you. Come, time. But come back. I'm coming back. For All, sure. right. All right. Go go get your championship trophy. Happy for you. Look, we don't want to mess up. We don't want to mess up a once-in-a-lifetime celebration for these guys. We love talking to them, and we'll get them. You'll have a chance to hear from them, but I hope you understand they never again get this moment on the stage in the center of the floor, and I do not want to rob them of that, and they are so deserving of it. So that's why we're letting them go away, and, and we'll hear from them all later. But uh, they need.